Hi guys, welcome back to my channel and thank you for checking out this video. This video is about um, this program called Dart Table. I thought it'd be a great program to show you guys because it is a free program where you can edit your raw images and also view them. So please go ahead and check out the link below if, if you're interested and you can download this program and go ahead and get a feel for it yourself, okay? I hope you enjoy this video. Thank you for checking it out. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe. Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. I just wanted to go ahead and start out today by showing you this program called Dart Table. Now, just be warned, I have never used this software before in my life. So I don't know a drop about anything. So just a small disclaimer right there. And this video is not sponsored by Dart Table by any means. Actually, this software is completely free and anyone can download it for for any reason at all if you're into photo editing great if you're just into looking at your raw files great um this is a program for anyone and if you want to learn how to use it well we're going to go through it today i don't know anything about it so i can't teach you anything but i can show you what the menus look like and kind of give you the first person experience of a first experience um at this software so let's go ahead and dig into this and see what it's made of all right so where do we start with this well i like to use filters and i like to kind of experiment with um what's these different modes contain split toning colorize color zones velvia that has velvia which is a fuji type filter so let's go ahead and see what they can do let's go to split toning first and see what we can do here so as you can see, it has hue, highlights, hue. Okay, so it says shadows, hue, highlights. Okay, so you have hues and sh highlights for the shadows. And then your, oh wait, that's wrong. I'm reading this incorrectly. Sorry guys. So it's shadows, hue, and saturation. Let's play with that first in the shadows, okay? So that means we're basically changing the hue. That's interesting. Okay, so if you have a color cast in your image, this is perfect. And I see it has an eyedropper tool, which is nice. So, hmm, let's see what this thing can do. I'm not an ounce sure what this can do. <laughs> but apparently you can drag this around. Oh, that's neat. Okay, so you can drag this little um, tool around and it's gonna give you different color casts and, for your hue. As far as I can tell yes which to me it kind of made my image look a little more drab so that's interesting like i said i don't know much about this software we're just playing around with it my experience is from photoshop so we're gonna just play around with this okay this is all about just opening the different layers of menus and and filters and seeing what they're all about to see how this program works and i know there's a lot more to this program that i don't know and that's okay we're learning together okay so if you are you are curious about this software or you want to know anything about it go ahead and download it play around with it that's how you learn you know that's how i learned photoshop actually is by just playing around with the software and just seeing what everything does I think that's a great way to learn actually from the beginning anyway then you read into books and you see what each thing does in a professional way so now let's go ahead and play with now i'm going to pick a certain color cast i can see in my buildings i think that's blue now i want to increase my saturation let's see what happens that's interesting so right now i'm just adjusting the shadows Let's go ahead and play around with the highlights. Let's see what happens when I do that. So the highlights, uh, there's a highlight right there. Eh, it's okay. 
I see it being very blue though. I don't know if I like that. So now we have balance. See, that makes more blue. Oh, there we go. There. So with that filter, with the properties slider, and we um, for balance, we can actually make it more of a yellow tone, is which is what I really want for this image anyway. Because during that time of day when I took this, it was closer to sunset. Let's see what this does. Compressing it. I'm not sure what that does. I might have to zoom in a little. Let's see. Now I shot all. I shot this image with my Fuji X100S. I was testing it out during um, the day to see what it can do. Um, I've been really wanting to get into a city and just take some really cool pictures with it. Unfortunately. I had the camera set up wrong because I haven't used this camera in forever. This camera does take amazing pictures though when you use it the right way. I think um, I had it at f. Mm, geez, it was one. It was like a really bad f stop. It was like f 5.6. Oh yeah, 5.6 right there. See, and honestly, when you're taking pictures with this camera at f 5.6, when you zoom in. Well, for this image, it's not bad, but for the Im other images I did see, it kind of started falling apart and I didn't like that. So I noticed that with this lens on the F100S, you do have to use a higher f-stop, but the lens does have a very nice 2.8 f-stop. So that's great. And actually, I think it's a little bit better than that. I think it's like a 2.2. Yeah. I'll have to get more into that. I'll have to make a whole review about that camera because that camera takes excellent pictures when you're using it the right way the lens is just perfect because it's a great walk around lens anyway let's talk more about this picture shall we there we go okay so, so i have this picture pretty dialed in right there with my my shadows and my highlights and the properties for split toning so let's go ahead and use colorize. Let's see what this thing does. Let's play around. Let's let's give it a little go. Okay, so colorize. I hit the the eyedropper and it totally took my color away. So I don't want that. And you know, let's go. Let's see if Control Z works on this. Yes. Okay. So don't do that. If you want a black and white image, well that's what you do and i think maybe that is for a black and white because usually when you're doing colorize in photoshop you're actually trying to put color into a a gray image or black and white image so that might be what that's for i would assume see you could play around with it and add color that's okay so we're not going to use this filter we're actually going to just turn this this lovely off this lovely thing off okay so now we're gonna go into color zones Ooh, this looks interesting so let's see what this thing could do it kind of looks like a curves filter hmm let's see I see a histogram so what am I doing right now I don't even know interesting I don't know. I see. Oh, that's kind of neat. It's brightening my my highlights of like the different colors. Hmm. It's like yellow. Now I got orange. Do I have any orange in this? Yes, I have a slight bit of orange. Oh, that's really cool. That's a cool filter, guys. I like that. So, and I okay. So I can brighten my blues, darken my blues. So. That looks better, a little bit darker, so I can get rid of some of that highlight in there. You want a blue sky, you know, that's cool. But I want my sky to be a little bit more bluer. Let's see if I can make that happen with this. What is this? What does it say this is? This kind of looks that way. Mm, no. We're, let's see what this is. Yeah, we're just playing around. See this purple? I don't think I have... Yeah, purple in the sky, maybe a little bit. Maybe a little bit. That's okay. Hmm. That's mix. What does mix do? Mix. Ah, so it like blends the old image with the new image. Interesting. Okay. Well, that's kind of a cool filter right there. I'll adjust to where I like it. 
I think I don't want so much purple in it though, because if you if you look at it, the purple is kinda taken away from the sky a little bit. Or blue, the blue, the blue is what we want. So let's go ahead and do that. That looks good to me. So now, okay, we did colorize, split toning, color zones. Let's try Velvia. What does Velvia do? It says Velvia is switched off. Enable. Velvia is switched on. Okay. Velvia, if you can tell at all, really put some color in the image. I like that. So that looks like they included a Velvia filter in this for maybe Fuji users. That's that's interesting. I could be wrong about the Fuji part, but you know what? It's always been Fuji Velvia, right? Come on. If you know film. And if I add more color, that's really nice. I like how the strength works. Let's see if it tears apart the image when I do that, though. Mm, no, you know what? I don't... Ah, oh, yes, yes. Maybe a little bit. I see a little bit of noise in there. So that does maybe tear it apart a little bit. It could also just be my f-stop, but I don't think so. And it could also be the other filter I use as well. So just be aware when you're using these filters, they could add some noise. Let's see what happens when I turn off color zones. Ah, see? The noise went away. Alright, so be weary. Okay. I like that yellow though, so I'm gonna put that back. But it when you put too much, that's the thing. When you put too much of a color, you can blow it out. And you don't want to do that when you're doing image adjustments. Ad adjustments. <laughs> so just be careful with the the noise. And I see, you know, see, look at this. I added, I don't know if I added sharpness or not when I added some of the color. I don't know. It looks decent. That noise doesn't bother me too much. Nah. The Velvia is nice, though. The Vel Velvia is a nice touch. I like that. Let's go ahead and zoom out again. Okay. And this is mid-tones bias. Ooh. What is that? That's a nice little filter. Oh. Let's see what it does up close. Oh, interesting. Okay, I think what it does is adds more blue. And maybe saturation in the blue. I don't know, kind of like it. Kind of like it. That looks decent. That's a nice, decent picture. Now, this is downtown San Diego, if I didn't mention that before. So, just in case you're wondering. Now let's go ahead and try color contrast. San Diego, California. Let's go ahead and try this. Let's see, we got green magenta contrast. Let's just play around. Ooh, that's colorful. That's a lot of color. <laughs> Dang. Okay, so green magenta contrast adds a ton of green and red. Or magenta, I guess, right? So, if we can play around with that, we can add more to give it more color. Color's not bad. You just don't want to overdo it because it will look very blown out. So, we need it in our palm trees. We need it in this building right here. When I did pull that slider over a bit, it did add quite a bit in the sidewalk right here. Let's go ahead and play with the blue-yellow contrast. Let's see what that does. All right, that's a, that's too blue. That's way too blue for my sky. I do want a bluer sky, though. I'm not gonna lie. Yes. So a little bit more blue would be nice. Yes. Not too overdone, because we don't want to give it too much, you know, craziness up there. But that looks decent. Now we, I did. I noticed this okay so on these tools that you have you also have the ability to draw in a mask so say I don't want this to be oh I don't know blue up here okay uh, let's see how this works I it's not hmm I guess you could do add a circle add a brush okay so oh look at that okay so we can go ahead and paint a mask. And you see what happened. Do you see what happened? It totally took away the color of this palm tree. 
So that is interesting. Now, how do you, how do you get rid of the mask? Oh, there you go. So you just do that. So that's a cool feature of this program. And I think every single one of your filters has that. That is a cool thing. I like that quite a bit. Now, when you're doing camera raw, it has little things here and there that I've noticed. Okay, I'm, I'm not a big camera raw user. I use it to just oh, like just basically adjust my image, but not a lot because sometimes you can overdo it in camera raw if you're not careful. You know, I, I know my limits. I do. But I really love editing in Photoshop. Now, I do my edits in camera raw that I can't do in Photoshop, basically. So, okay, let's get back into this. Color correction, color contrast. Let's do color correction. Let's see. Wow. Look at all those color dots or boxes. <laughs> all right, so it's dragged the line for split toning. Bright means highlights. Dark means shadows. Use mouse wheel to change saturation. Oh. Oh. Wow. This is neat. This is getting really detailed. Okay, so what do you do? Select a dot? No? Okay, so it just shows you. Oh, this is interesting. Okay, so you could use the dial to make it like a black and white completely. Whoa. So you go the other way and totally like reverses the color. That's that's trippy. That's really trippy. Now, if you really want a piece of artwork, that might be kind of a cool piece right there. You know what I mean? So you can really play around with this and make it, you know, how you really want it. You know, I'm not saying I'm going to keep it that way because I like a photo to look like a photo. But hey, that, that could be fun. So let's go ahead and add our color again to where I want it. Yeah, that's about right right there. Okay, so that's that's a nice tool. And you can draw, of course, your layer masks. Or and it doesn't really have layers in this, but you can draw your mask and then delete it if you don't like it. They have the uniform. This is pan parametric mask. There's so many different tools in this thing. I don't know where to start. Interesting. Indeed. Wow, look at all that. You can feather it. You can, you can refine the mask. So that we'll get into another time. That's really cool, though. You can do a lot in this program. All right. Well, let's get into shadows and highlights. Now, shadows and highlights are always important because... You know, that's where you are sometimes missing your light in your darks. So that's kind of a... Let's go ahead and see what this thing can do with that. It's important. Okay. So essentially, if you go too high with your shadows, it will look like a HDR image. Well, one of those really burnt up HDR images that we saw back in early 2000s, right? Come on. You know what I'm talking about. Photomatics, I think, was it? <laughs> yeah, but you can actually adjust it accordingly to give you the amount of light you want in your highlights and shadows, which is nice. It's a very, you can really dial in your details with your filters in this program, which was really a cool feature. Okay. So you soften it, you can compress it, shadow color adjustment. Let's see what that does. So, you know, just drag it all the way down. That did nothing. Hmm. Highlight color adjustment? What am I, 50%? That did nothing. The only thing I don't like about this. Oh, wait. So you can click it to give it back your uh, adjustment. That's nice. I don't know if that was 100 or not. I can't remember. But you can also, you could just double click it and it'll go back to what you had it. That's neat. Okay, so we're done with that filter. Let's do what was it? Levels. Okay, so levels is one of my favorite tools in Photoshop, and um, 
just using it in just general because with levels in Photoshop, you can actually adjust your midtones, your highlights, and your darks accordingly and kind of get rid of your color cast that you don't want. So let's go ahead and see what this thing can do. First, I'm going to hit auto, see what happens. Hmm. Let's go back. Let's try it again. I don't see a difference. Oh, wait. Maybe I do. Where is it? Let's, let's watch the picture again. Hold on. Okay, so it brightened it a little bit. That's nice. So if you can see in the, the histogram up here, there are a lot of darks. There are a lot of midtones, and the highlights kind of go down a little bit. What I do like about this is the the levels tool already automatically went up to like the the level highlight slider went up to the histogram and that's what you're supposed to do in, in photoshop as well you're supposed to get rid of the information you're not using in your levels tool so then you're using the information with your slider right here see i can add more highlights of course but when you get to the histogram it means you're actually using it instead of because this is extra information you're not even using essentially and when you drag it over that information is like gone so you don't have to worry about it in a way you don't see it you don't notice it but it's just it's a better thing okay so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna find we're gonna use this eyedropper tool it says pick black point from image so let's go ahead and pick our darkest black point and i think oh whoa whoa what happened never mind wait i'm wrong okay so <laughs> that scared me that really freaked me out for a minute so you have to drag this little tool around to give it the ideal black point and since it did it for me it already really knew what i wanted from being able to tell what this tool does it did a pretty good job already so i don't really need to adjust it so let's go ahead and hit Control z to kind of get rid of that mm, did i mess it up did i no is that where i was I feel like it keeps going back to where it was. <laughs> okay, there we go. We're back to where we started. Okay. So now midtones. I am so afraid to use these duels because I don't know what they're gonna do. Okay. Okay, now I can live with that. So let's go ahead and find a good midtone in my perspective. It's too dark. I like how it works live when you're playing with a tool. That's that's nifty. I like it. I think my midtone is the more of the street, to be honest. But see how it's giving me really bright highlights around the the buildings. I'm not too much of a fan of that because it's like highlighting everything. So I think Auto did a fantastic job. So let's just go back and get rid of that. Well, worth it. Oh, it's weird. Okay, so every time I dragged it, it did a change. So what that means is that I didn't release the mouse ever. But when I changed my position, it automatically thought that was the spot I picked. So that's an interesting thought. I don't exactly know how many history strokes this thing has. I can look into that. I should probably look into that right now. Hold on. Let's get back to where we were. That looks very dark. Was that where it was? Hold on. We're getting back. Yeah, you know what? It's a little dark now that I look at it. Okay. That's better. Okay. So auto. Let's just hit auto again. There we go. Auto did its thing. It is a little dark, so I'm going to pull it back a little bit now that i saw that see your eyes play tricks on you they really do 
When you're looking at the screen for too long, your eyes will start playing tricks on you. I don't... The other thing I do not like, you guys, is how dark this is. And that's just because it was dark anyway. It's a shadow. That's okay. Let's see if I can get rid of some. Maybe. Mm, right there. Nah. So, and we can also draw a mask around anything we don't want to be highlighted, which is nice in this as well. Highlights, I'm not going to do that. So we're done with levels. Let's go ahead and go into... Let's see. Tone curves. Okay. So this is a curve filter. So, basically like an adjustment layer in Photoshop. So let's go ahead and see what this one, how powerful this one is. So automatically it shows you my histogram, which is really nice. Now, you got to be careful with these because this program thinks every single move is a change. I don't know if that works in curves though for this. That looks nice. I like colors. Okay, so I want to brighten my darks a little bit. And then lower my hmm mid-tones. That's bad. Look how flat that's getting. Oh my gosh. You really gotta be careful with this tool. It is powerful. For being a free program, this thing has a lot of features. I am shocked. And also, you can also use Control Z to get rid of your history that you did. So that's nice. I need to find out my history. Let's see. See, now this is interesting because, oh, this is interesting. Because it doesn't have a file menu system like it does normally on Windows. Because this is a Linux program. This is a free Linux program, essentially. So I think it will be right here. Yes. General. Import. Light table. See, there's a whole nother part of this program too called light table. And that's a total different thing. So this program has a bundle of fun awaiting you when you first open it. I'm sure they make a book on this. I will have to look that up later. But it shows you all your different settings your presets. I'm not sure what Luna options are. This is a fun program, guys. If you're new to using this, I hope this is kind of giving you some insight about how this program is. Because there's a lot to it. So don't be scared to try it. Get your hands dirty. Get in there and, and just try it. Because I, I'd say so far it's pretty worth it worth the free uh, free download <laughs> so okay let's go ahead and try this one's called contrast brightness saturation and we're gonna play around with it see what it does let's go all the way over here wow that's different okay so i don't care for that much maybe to do slight adjustments very slight adjustments and then brightness. So that's almost like an exposure dial. And then saturation. Ooh, this is going to be bad. Okay. So that's fun. Okay. Let's see if we can get back to one or zero. There we go. Okay. There we go. Zero, zero, zero. Okay. So that one's okay. So let's go ahead and go to RGB levels. Red, green, blue levels. Let's see what this thing can do. I like the auto on the levels. Auto is nice. So let's go ahead and try auto on this. It did not do a thing. Wait, did it? Let's go ahead and play. Uh, I think it was slight. 
Okay, let's do it again. If anything, it was so slight, I can't even tell. I can't even tell. I didn't see anything. Okay, well, we're gonna leave that. That's that's decent. Yeah. So let's go into our GB curve. This should be interesting. Because I feel like we just did something like that. But let's go ahead and try this again. So let's see what happens when I drag. Okay. So I have my histogram. And it just it adjusts everything. And I'm not sure if it adjusts. I do see my blue. I see my cyan. And what's it do when you do that? It brightens it like crazy. Okay. Hmm. I'm getting a little bit of a marine layer right there, which is nice. Okay. That's not bad. Let's go ahead and zoom in. Make sure I don't have it. Yeah, see? Okay. One thing you have to be so careful about when you're editing like this is that you will start getting not not, not very nice uh, edges. So I, it gives you a sort of like chromatic abrasion. And look at all that noise that's happening in there. So these tools are powerful. You got to be careful. Let's see if I can go back here and see if I can make a difference here. Oh, that was fun. Okay, so I have, look at, see, from other filters, I have noticed that there's a lot of noise. So that's no bueno. That's no good. So let's go ahead and maybe turn some off. That's nice because it's like the eyeball in Photoshop to turn off and on. Alright, split toning, was that it? Color zones. Ah, color zones is not my friend. That's what was wrong. Okay, so color zones. Let's see if I can adjust that a little bit and maybe bring it down a bit. The blue, the aqua. Yeah, so no color zones, guys. I'm not using color zones in this image. That's okay. We're learning. See, it's all about playing around. See what it's all about. All right. So next one we're gonna do is color balance RGB. Now I have no idea what this is. It is a monster though. This has a lot of adjustments, and it it could be kind of difficult. So when you, I would highly suggest when you use this filter from what i can tell what, what i would do anyway is i would just go in at a hundred percent and i would just play around with the filters and see what happens so we're going to do master four ways is selective color grading oh so this color grading interesting okay and masks isolate luminescence okay and this is global well let's see what happens color shift that is fun Look at all that purple that just happened. That's a huge shift right there. Yellow. <laughs> that looks really interesting. Just like before. So I like how you can click it. We'll go back to zero. That's nice. So global vibrance. No. Okay. So that basically. Oh, wait, wait. Look what happened. It changed. Okay. Contrast. I feel like a lot of these filters kind of do the same thing a little bit. No, that's not bad. That's a little more contrast, and I kind of like it. Let me see, though. Let me zoom out. Yeah, I like the contrast in the building. Now, say I don't like that in the trees, because my tree, my palm tree right here is a little dark. How do I do that? How do I make that change? Hmm. Well, let's take my little paintbrush here and let's see what I can do. Let's see what kind of magic can I can make happen with this. Okay. That's interesting. So it it does give you a it does feather it. That's nice. I like that. Now now let's see. 
Let's see what I can do with this. Now, according to what I see, it is let me adjust this mask with this setting I just applied. That's not exactly what I wanted to do, but that's a nice, that's, that's good to know. So when you do circle a subject, when you're using a filter, I think it only is going to adjust that one subject that you highlighted or that you basically circled with your selection. So let's reduce the contrast. Yes. So see how that changed dramatically? Now, oh, what the, wait, wait, wait. Okay, so the filter. This is interesting. It's a tool you definitely want to play around with. I'm going to, I'm going to tell you that right now. And then you have opacity. So you can change the power of that filter, which is good. Feathering. They give you a lot of feather tools. My goodness. That's okay. All right. Well, I'm going to save all that for another day because I like that. I, I actually think that looks decent. The dark's here a little dark for me. If you can tell, they're a little bit dark. But, yeah, that's, not, that's okay. We'll deal with it. Let's zoom out. Now, how do I... I just hit... I don't know how to get rid of that tool. Do I just go to the next tool? Okay, yes. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and... Oh, I wanted to go back here. Let's go back to color balance. Okay. So, as far as I can tell... Well, let me see. Let's try this linear chroma grading. Let's see what that does. And if it does it, the whole image. And oh nope, it just does my selection. Okay. So let's go ahead and delete that selection. That's a good question. Like, how do I delete that selection? Did that work? Let's play around. Okay, so by hitting that tool, the X down here, it deleted my selection. Let's see what this does. Reset to default blend color space. Okay. What does this do? Draw a pen. Okay. And raster mask. Oh, okay. So, okay, here's a good example. Let's go back. We're going to make this go back to zero. Okay, so say I want to adjust just this. Let's do this again, okay? We're going to go ahead and draw our mask. Let's get into this. Let's let's do this. Since we got this popped up, let's do it, okay? I'm going to draw our mask right here around the leaves of the palm tree. Got it. Okay. That's not the best mask in the world, but it will do. And it's adjustable, so that's good. Let's go ahead and adjust it accordingly. I liked having a little bit more power in my highlights. My midtones. It's not working. Maybe I'm just blind, but to me it's not working. Let's try the opacity again says it's working did it work maybe it worked I want to see if it worked yes it worked okay now that's interesting okay it looks like it's only doing okay so drawing doesn't work <laughs> drawing doesn't work I think you have to just color in your whole thing here i don't know this is very weird to me it's new i'm sure some of you who are watching this are like what the heck are you doing what is going on there why are you drawing that around that palm tree well i am new to this that's why 
So bear with me. Bear with my my new experience of the software. All right, let's let's try this again. We're gonna just draw, I think, a circle. Can I just draw a circle? Maybe not. Oh no! What did I do? We don't want that. Okay, let's go ahead and go to pencil. And why did that show up again? I deleted it. It's alive. It thinks I want that. How do you delete this? I'm having problems. Off. That's how you turn it off. But how do you delete it? Do you just like nope see that's not working that's weird okay i do i select it i think it rasterized it is that permanent hold on i don't want it go back you guys i messed up on my image okay did that get rid of it no, it didn't. Hold on. We're going backwards. That was my my mistake. Okay, there's my... I see it. There it is. Oh my gosh. Alright, so how do you get rid of this? You just select it, and then you hit delete. Eh. Uh, no. I'm lost. My mask is permanent. I'm pretty sure that's not how it works. Eyeball. The eyeball tool. Mm. Okay. Well. I turn it off. Mm-hmm. Okay, well, let's get rid of it if we can. I'm just gonna keep going backwards. I'm not sure how to use it. That's interesting. That's kind of tough. So I'll have to do a video on that. Like, well, I'll have to watch a video on that to see how that thing works. Because I am not sure how the mask, the masking works in this program. It looks like a mess to me. Sorry, it's slow. It's working. I'm not even sure how much this program actually um, uses on your CPU and GPU. But it seems to be working okay. Okay, We're almost there. There we go. Got rid of it. Okay. So this gives you an idea of this program. Okay? I don't like it that blue. No. Not at all. Like how, how blue it was. It's too blue for me. So let's go ahead and turn this thing off. Yeah. It does no justice for my image right now. Color calibration. Okay. So color calibrate. The gamma compression. I don't know anything about this. Colorfulness, brightness, and gray. RGB. And cat. I don't feel like that did much. I could be doing something I don't know about though. So that's good input RGB so okay so what I'm doing is balancing out my image essentially yes I am see how that happened oh I'm giving it that nice color tone it's how you kind of calibrate your monitor in a way Okay. Okay. 
So you can do brightness on your inputs of R, and then your input of brightness on G. So G is for green, and then B is for blues. So it's too bright. Let's see what kind of damage I'm doing. Oh, it's not horrible. Yeah, that's not horrible. I, it did soften my building though a little bit, I think. Yeah, a little bit. So be careful with this tool. Mm-hmm. Grays. What does that do? Wow. Okay. That made it black and white. So, but if you adjust, I think, all of them, you'll end up getting the same color. Nope. Wrong. Let's put that back to zero, shall we? That sounds good to me. All right. Color calibration. Don't know about that. Okay. Graduated density. I've heard of this in a different program. Okay, so it adds more brightness. Hmm. What does this thing say in the dial? It says the density in EV for the filter. So what? EV. Huh. Okay. Oh, wow, that's that's interesting. What does this do? I don't know what that does. I don't see. Okay, see a little bit of a difference. Is it rotating it? No. It says that's rotating it. I don't know why. Let's make it zero again. We don't need that. It says go away. Why doesn't it go away? What is that tool? Okay. So I did something. I did a boo-boo. Oh. I see what that does. That's a very interesting tool. So you basically are adjusting a certain part of your image to be darker and lighter. I think it takes away UV rays, in a way, if you really want to use this tool correctly. So, say I have this. And I want darker. Hmm, darker. Yes. It's like a grad. it is graduated, so it's like a neutral density filter. Hello? It's like an in-program neutral density filter. So... <laughs> Can I move up and down? Yes, I can. So say my sky is super blown out and I can't recover it. This might be a good tool for that. It really could be. I mean, it does a lot. See how it got rid of my, my sky back there? So that's interesting. It's like a polarizer. It really is like a polarizer. That's kind of cool. I kind of like that. I'm not going to lie. It's kind of cool. I can't adjust it. It's all adjustable. That's nice. But I think I want it a little bit lighter. I see what the tool does, though. So... We're gonna we're gonna turn it off. Doesn't look like it actually did anything. Alright, color gradation. Okay. Now I do want to brighten this image a little bit before I'm done here. And take away some of the blue. Because it is very, very blue. So let's go ahead and adjust this. Now Oh, tone equalizer. So let's see what this does. Before I, I stop using these color adjustments, let's go ahead and see what these do for fun. I don't know. 
that's weird did you guys see that how that worked that adds a contrast in different parts of your image weird okay we'll put that right back there so it makes it kind of like give you highlights in different areas of your image let's see what zero does for fun no that's bad don't do that i see what it does it gives you an hdr effect no i don't like this so much oh oh so it tells you this little dial tells you where you should adjust okay so you leave it there sorry got out of it again so you leave it here Maybe not. It doesn't stay. And then you can adjust it to where I guess you see. That's 2.8. So you're basically adjusting for that point. That's that's interesting. Okay. Well, I'm not using that tool today because it doesn't work for me. But we're going to go ahead. And what I would like to do to finalize this adjustment area is to take away some blue and uh, let's see color correction let's see if i can just turn it down just a little bit what do you guys think of that one i think that's a little bit better so just take away some of the saturation and make, make it look a little more natural Oops, I keep doing that. I keep thinking double clicking makes it zoom in. Yeah, see the greens are more green, more natural. The sky is more blue. I don't have as much noise in my sky. The building is so blown out. It, and the windows are turquoise in real life, so that's cool. It did give me what I was looking for. Now, just for the purpose of you guys being able to see this i am at 5.6 it is a 23 millimeter lens on the fuji can you see how it just started falling apart in the trees a little bit because it has a little bit of chromatic abrasion right there if you guys use fuji to edit your um not edit but take pictures with if you're using the x100 s I don't know about any of the other versions, but this one at 5.6 at ISO 200, the trees fell apart a bit. Okay, so 5.6, eh, it's okay. I'm sure if you're taking a closer up image, it would be even better, but it does fall apart a little bit. That's okay. Yeah, so there's a little bit of chromatic abrasion in the buildings. The branches and that could be also from the edit but we're talking about this program aren't we so far i like what i see it has nice adjustments on the sides here um the adjustment layer panels are nice to play with here uh let's see okay I clicked the wrong thing. So let's get Control Z, Control Z, Control Z. There we go. Okay. So there's my image. Now we have more. There's a lot to this program. Let's go to light table. Well, wait. Let's see what these are first. Oh, so on the side here, it look, it shows all my history states. I believe those are history states. Let's go into one. Okay. Interesting. So that's what I did. It's a different kind of history state that I'm used to. But it looks like you can turn it off and on. Or not. I think essentially... Oh! Okay, yes. It is a history state. That's what I started with. Yuck. Let's go to correction 43. That looks good. That looks decent. Okay. So I started with 
Eh, not the greatest. And what I ended with, not too shabby. All right, so it looks like I can duplicate my layer. Yep, I sure can. And I can probably adjust that instead of the original. Oh, very interesting. Okay. Yes, I want to physically delete this. And physically delete this one. Color picker. Huh. Mean. Tagging. So I can actually tag the photo. Image information. Okay. So it does show all your image information, which is really nice. I can't, oh yes, I can. And it looks like you can actually adjust the metadata. So that's a cool feature. And it tells the image, I <laughs> like how it says film roll, that's nice. Uh, 116 Fuji, and then the file number, where my file is at. Um, Import the timestamp, the type of camera, my aperture, my focal length, ISO. So that's a nice thing right there. Okay. Uh, mask manager. Okay. So, okay. Wow. That's the mask manager. How do you delete these masks? There you go. Okay, so that's how you delete it. Didn't know, now I know. You're learning, we're learning right now. And then export it. So that's how you export your file. So say you're working on this image, you're all done with it, you export it right there. So that's good to know. I'm not doing that quite yet because I want to open this up in Light Table to see what this is all about. Okay, so now we're in Light Table. I feel like it's in the same. What does light table do? Select images, remove, copy, delete. Okay. Oh, create an HDR. This has a lot of stuff. Invert selection, select film roll. I don't know. History stack. I'm gonna have to learn about all this. Geotagging. Tells the time and date. And I don't think it, no, I don't have any information on the camera for geo. It's not connected to the GPS. And then metadata editor. Okay, title, that's just basic. Tagging, so I guess if you're gonna put it on social media, that's great. Geotagging. I already did that. Export. Same thing. Same thing. Um, light table. I'll have to learn about it, see what else I can do. I know I could probably do more than this. Huh. I know I can rate it. I could give it color labels. Um make it full size. Uh, I really do like this software because it really is very detailed and once you learn this program I think you can use it very effectively now, how do I get out of this uh, there we go I think it is very effective in many ways let's see color assessment conditions interesting okay I'm not sure what these are. Toggle clipping indication. Okay, so I'm clipping in color right there. I can see that. Okay. <laughs> wow, the white frame around it really brightened it up. That's that's crazy. Toggle focus peaking mode. Ooh. Okay. So I think all those things are focus or out of focus. Oh, I see it though, guys. Yeah. 
if you look it's not there's problems with the focusing as far as I can tell mm-hmm let me look at it without it yeah it's got that uh, chromatic abrasion in there that's neat now what is this what is this toggle soft proofing hmm what did we do today soft proof I'm not sure what soft proof is I'll have to look at more into that one toggle gamut check ooh I'm out of gamut I know yeah see all those are out of gamut so printing this would be interesting because there's so many things out of gamut that's a good one to have turned on when you're editing for sure because when you edit you always want to know if you're in gamut if you're going to print this image so that's great to always have on because when you adjust it will go away so if I take away some of the see when I took away some of my saturation automatically the gamut changed so that's good to know. Okay, and then the last but not least, this one is toggle guidelines. Okay, so this is good if you want to crop or if you'd like to make sure your horizon lines are straight. Now, I don't know how you actually change your horizon in this or if you can actually um adjust the horizon anyway that's a good one to find out like i said i'm new to this program so i'm completely learning on all this it seems really cool though you have your library at the bottom here which i only have one Im image selected and then you have, it looks like it display a second dark dark room image window. Or quick access for applying any of your styles. Okay. So you have presets. That's nice. Alright. Well, guys. Let's see what else this is. Hold on. Tethering. No camera with tethering support available for use. Okay. Slideshow map. Okay, you know what? I think for this tutorial, for this first beginning tutorial of this, I am done. So I hope this gave you an idea of how this program works a little bit. I'm no professional at this. I hope you guys understand. Um that it's all new to me so when i show you all this it's from a complete beginner perspective and i hope you enjoyed this video i really do because i hope it kind of showed you what this program is made of all the different filters and adjustment layers what they can do and how powerful they are if you like this video go ahead and hit that like button and if you like my channel and all my other videos go ahead and subscribe and i'll be posting more videos soon this is just um one that i wanted to do and show you guys what it's all about especially from my point of view because i am completely new to all this um, i like i said i am a photoshop user i edit with photoshop whenever i take pictures and that's how i, I do my thing so that's my workflow so this is, this is a really cool program though. I really do like it. I think it has amazing potential and I think it could be used in a very usable way. I think it could be a great way to edit your images. So guys, I highly suggest you check it out. Go ahead and download it. I'll put the link below in the description. And yeah, please like and subscribe. All right, I'll see you all soon. Please take care and I'll see you next one.